Hey everybody, welcome back to Misinformation, Disinformation, and Random Thoughts uh, with your hosts, Eggnards and Fat Phil. We did a video about a, a month ago and there was we got a, a really nice response about the road ahead, or well, if you can even call it the road ahead, the, the trail ahead, I've heard it called, the, the I don't know, the trail of breadcrumbs, it, it doesn't matter, it, it is what it is. Um, we're back again to talk uh, about Ahsoka. We're here to talk about what's coming after Ahsoka the economy events, the light speed bundles, and everything coming up in the game uh, over the next year. Uh, Fat Phil, how you doing tonight, man? Dude, it's, it's a good night. You know, we got through the work day. We're one day closer to the weekend yet again. Now we can't complain. <laughs> this is a long day for me. I told you I was texting you before, and I, I literally just got home. It's like nine thirty, um, but that's what it seems like for for guys our age. This is the only time that you can get together with other people and. Uh, and try to get some information out there. And it's a great day, we had no idea. We um, we have that kit reveal that came out, what, like two hours ago? Yes, sir, dude. Death Trooper Peridia, man. Oh, I didn't even read it, did you read it yet? I've read pieces of it. There's some parts of it that I think are just kind of like, what the hell are we thinking? <laughs> like, it, yeah, there, there's a part of this kit, I'm just gonna say it now, there's a part of this kit that just is like, um, I don't, I don't know. How do you say? It? Like, you, you, like, you don't get your way, so you just make up house rules. Like, that's what this character kit feels like is house rules. Like, <laughs> can I? So, yeah. Before we even talk about this kit, can we just talk about um, Friday night? There was a puzzle, and uh, the puzzle gave us the information that Death Trooper Peridio was going to be a Relic Seven requirement. Didn't we already know that? Like, wasn't that already I pretty much told to us? Yeah, I, like they, in that, you know, whatever spend ahead, character coming ahead post that they did, it was like, these characters will be required at Relic 7 for Ahsoka. Like, it, yeah, it felt it, like this was a... And every GL we've new. gotten since the beginning, like, um, no, JML had two, C only had one, and JMK only had one marquee. But every other GL that had marquees attached to it, all of the marquees were required at the same relic level. So if it was relic five, it was relic five. If it was relic seven, it was relic seven. So it almost felt like a kick in the nuts to get like this puzzle. And we got information we already had. And that was coupled with two weeks ago where they told us that gas was gonna be a requirement. Uh, and that was already in the game. Yeah. Like what? What's yeah, I, what's going on? I I don't. Again, this like probably came from the fact that they had like eight different posts to talk about what should have been solved in one, and like that they're just kind of continuing with this. Like, are you guys not talking to each other? Like, for fuck's sake, man! Get it they, and they have the one laptop. You'd think they'd leave notes for each other on there, <laughs> like little notes app. Like, hey, this is what I did today. It's it, it must be one laptop with. 10 different usernames, you know, like, the <laughs> no. they've all got, like, <laughs> everybody's got, you know, Star Wars fan 69, Star Wars fan 68, Star Wars fan 420. <laughs> that's, that's my work laptop, my instructors, they, I have mine and then theirs, but I never want them to use theirs. I made that years ago and I hate when they sign into it because then I get on and I go, wait a second, where are all my files? Like where did everything yeah, go? Yeah. Why is my why is my computer destroyed right now? Uh, that's that must be what's happening. Uh, so I, I didn't read it. You did. It's up on my big screen here. I know that it might be smaller for you. Do you do you want to read this? Is it easy for you to read this? Do you want me to read it? I have it up on my second screen here. Um, I've heard you have a sexy can... voice from some of your from some of your followers. So I'm sure they're here for that. If you want to go through it. Oh boy. All right. So we've got, I, so whenever I read these side note, I always will like start cutting stuff out that I just don't think is important because like, it's just, when you read it, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, 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 nom, nom, nom every time. Cause that's just insane. Um, no, 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 but it's not C, 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 C. Have you never played an SNES video game? I think this is, this is killer instinct. It's cook, 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 combo breaker. <laughs> That's that's how you do it, dude. No, I I've not played an SNES one. 
Oh my God. Well, that's the only joke here. So I'll, I'll leave you, I'll leave you to be with that one. Uh, but use the execute ability to get a ability cooldown reset plus bonus turn. So like, I mean, again, I feel like that the bonus turns are getting kind of old at this point. Like everybody's getting a bonus yeah. turn. It used to be something kind of cool just in Jedi Knight Anakin's kit and he could give one to Padme and now it's just kind of like, hey, bonus turns for everyone. It's like Oprah. Everybody stops, everybody stops turn meter or gets, you know, a negative effect because of turn meter, so bonus turns are the way to go. Um, it's fine. I'm not that salty. <laughs> AOE ability to help perfectly set up execute ability. Great way to ignore taunt. Um, that's great. I, I think getting her any way to get around taunts is beautiful. Continues to build off the new Blight debuff. Um helping to spread light across enemy teams with his Omnomicron siphon critical damage can scale damage significantly so again another character getting siphon with siphon that's the so it started with supreme leader kylo ren yes where he siphons and his stats ramp afra has the same thing where she siphons potency uh kylo siphons mastery um, and then doesn't then Leia, Bane? Yeah, Bane has a siphon mechanic, and Leia doesn't. She kind of has a siphon where she can reduce your mastery. She doesn't gain anything from it, but Leia can reduce your mastery. So it's somewhat like similar siphon mechanics. Yeah, where they're all reducing a like Kylo's reducing your mastery. Bane or Afro will reduce your potency, Bane reduces your max health, this is your critical damage, and it makes that character better. Um, so, like, again, I, that's fine. Like, Siphon's an interesting mechanic. It's always cool. What I am interested in here, and I don't know if this goes through your head, but is this finally an, a character where you're going to want to mod them for critical damage? Because every character they've released since relics have come out you want to mod for offense because critical damage has just kind of got thrown out the it's window it's just not enough so yeah like you get way more benefit from offense at this point well um, if he's gonna siphon it and he's gonna get that i mean i feel like if he's gonna siphon critical damage and get that much critical damage it almost feels like it's gonna be less important to get critical damage because every percent extra that you build there's going to be a diminishing return on how effective it is, right? So wouldn't offense overall be better to go with that critical damage? I, I guess I'm thinking about the starting point of it. That like if you're starting at 150 versus starting at what 200 something percent. Yeah. What? Or, I mean, I guess it's not 150 CB relic, only 192, but like starting at that higher level, you could get somewhere faster. It'd be interesting to see the numbers. Yeah, well, I like to mod through looking at Kyber 1 players. So I, yeah. I'll just wait for the really smart, like, gauntlet players to do it. And then I go, oh, okay, that, that works. Yeah, I need both Gugek to mod those, and then I'll figure out how. <laughs> um, so the Thrawn's Death Troopers are brutal and scary. Wanted to lean into that for these specific Death Troopers. Death Trooper Peridia. Just a little nibble was inspired by the blinking you miss moment where he attempts to bite Sabine's arm, only to have her block it with her Beskar Van Brace. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. I mean, I I think they have gotten a lot better with their animations and artwork lately. Absolutely. Um, and I think it's it is showing in the the thoughts that's going into them that it's not just copy paste anymore like Beers and Stark or like Yet and Tarkin. I don't know if everybody notices those, but it's like the same exact ability. I actually, when I do my battles, and I know uh, I'm not on the PC client, I have it, I have access to it. Meathead gave it to me really, really early, but because I'm not on PC, when I when I do boot up my old PC to play it, it's really just to get the um, the free pack, and I don't even do that every day. So on my phone, I don't, I, I almost don't even see the animations. I, I look right oh, yeah. past them. I shouldn't say the animations for all of them are the same, but like the when you see the like you think Beers and Stark is literally like a copy paste of each other, and you just change some colors and a little yes. bit. Yes, yes. 
Like they've gotten a lot. They've gotten away from doing a lot of that stuff and made them much more interesting characters, which is good for the game. Um, so the Death Trooper Peridia's skill rotation varies on depending on whether or not he's in territory wars with the with his Omicron. So skill rotation. So that seems to me like the the skill that you want to use, right? You you like some guys you want to use middle special, last special, basic. That's yeah. what I think of. So they're saying crit damage if your friends try to boost it. So they are saying crit damage, but again, like you said, are we offense better? Um, while Death Trooper Peridia works under existing leads, he's really wanting waiting for the right captain to come along to lead him. So that right there has to be Enoch, right? Yes. They're definitely referring to Enoch in that regard. So that is an interesting thought here because how does that work with, um, I'm just looking at the tags here. Do we have his tags? Um, I believe the Imperial tags Revenant. are up here. He's Imperial, Imperial Revenant, Revenant, Night Sister, Dark Side. So my question then is, so how does he fit in with this Night Sister team? Because is Enoch going to be the leader of that team with the Great Mothers, Morgan, and uh, like what the hell with Night Trooper, right? Like I, I'm trying we, to figure we out. call him Drunk Trooper here? Drunk Trooper. Drunk Trooper. I love it. So I, I'm trying to figure out like he's. Who is actually the leader of that team? Because they're saying the right leader to lead him. Like, is that just a, a phrase, or are they saying that Enoch has the lead for that team? Yeah, I yep. feel like we. So, Drunk Trooper does work under Night Sisters now, but it's it's not amazing. You know, um, like Three Scoundrels. Logan was talking about using it, um, and and it it does what it needs to do. But I think that a lot of people are largely ignoring even trying it. Um, because we know that that's not where this character belongs. Um, and for those of us that do have really strong Night Sisters, like I have really strong Night Sisters, I already have an established Night Sister team. Why do I want to break that up to put in this guy, especially with how few people, what, one, two thousand people are going to have him before he's farmable? And so, and the other question here, to kind of staying on track with this, is. Enoch, Night Trooper, and Death Trooper. Is that going to be a team for 3v3? And then Great Mothers, Morgan, and Acolyte, Spirit as the other 3v3 team. Because one thing that has, like, think of Gungans. The one yeah. area that Gungans suck. It, I shouldn't say suck. But, like, the, that's negative. Is from a 3v3 perspective, you have two Gungans, you don't get them. I and actually there's use nowhere them. to so I do. So I use. So I obviously I have Jar Jar. I know I'm 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 ruining your whole point here, but like I have the Jar Jar Omicron and the Phalanx Omicron. So I send in a three man with Jar Jar to take out Ray, and then I send in Phalanx and Boomadir with no leader, and I take out whatever Separatist team. So if there's Trench on defense, I take it out. If there's New on defense, I take it out with a two man no leader team. It's a beautiful thing. Right. I retract that statement. I was going to say that it's going to suck for 3v3, but like, man. It's um, crazy. I, I mean, I have the Omer, I have the Datacron, so I don't know if it if it works otherwise. If, yeah. But if without that Datacron, let's say if that doesn't work, right? Like, then you're kind of, it's kind of like the Bad Batch almost with Omega and like Wrecker. Yeah. You don't really, you don't really have a way to use them. So I hope and it kind of is weird because they haven't released a lot of teams lately where they do multiple leads inside of the same team. Like, that was a bad I would like it'd be nice to, yeah, or the like Jedi come launch, like everybody has a leadership. Yes. Um, but it is, it is something I hope they do here because 3v3 is such a prominent game mode. And it's awful when you're investing in a character that you can't use inside of both 3v3 and 5v5 because they don't make the cut. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons I love the Leia team and the Queen Amidala team is that there is a core three characters that exist inside of that team that you're not missing anything 
when you go into 3v3 or 5v5 yeah. compared to JMK, um, Jabba, you know, at Lord Vader, I think you're kind of, you still get the most of it with Royal Guard and Maul compared to other ones, but like, there's certain characters, there's certain teams that I feel miss so much in 3v3 comparative to 5v5, and like, Leia and, uh, you know, who the hell else was I saying in that? Queen Amidala are two examples where like, they stay consistent. They them. have a good, a good core, right? It's three plus two. Um, and it, it's yeah. true, like, when you get into threes, you, and you're like, oh, well, this great team that I just farmed, what do I do with them here? Right, so, yeah. and, I, and I do like the idea of, so, like, Night Sisters, Mother Talzin is the definitive lead. Um, but for, like, the Meren special mission, uh, Old Daka is the definitive lead. And I kind of liked when they did that, because it, even though it's the same team, there's just a little bit more strategy of deciding, hey, do I use this lead or do I use that lead? Yep. No, yeah. I So I just, I want to move on, but I did want to at least say I hope they give Enoch a lead because that has been something they've been kind of stringent on is keeping leaderships out of certain characters compared to others um, that they've been really seeing. Uh, it is a marquee unit following the new marquee structure. I love to see that. The, the new marquee structure is amazing. Uh, it is a Relic 7 requirement, as we said. And then here's that part that I said, like, it's just like, what the what the hell are they doing, right? So we have a lot of abilities that say, if you defeat an enemy with this ability, do X. With Execute, what will happen is if the enemy is dropped below 10% or 20% with the Omicron by just little Nibbles damage, they will be instantly defeated in the same turn and Death Trooper Viridia will gain a bonus turn, and his cooldown on that ability will be reset so he can continue to clean up an enemy squad. Like, what the... What is this... That's like oh. a... a um, an extension of um, Savage, right? Because he had the original Execute, where it was like, if you're under 30%, it'll do massive damage. It won't automatically kill, but it basically was a kill shot. Um, yep. But I guess I'm confused by this, if you defeat an enemy with this ability, do X, and then Execute does this 10% instantly defeated, is that still gonna proc those things? Like, defeat so, things? I think, what it, I think what it's doing is it's just saying, hey, instead of, like, instantly defeat, if I damage your Jar Jar to 10% of his health, he's gonna die. And then everything else is the same. Like, all stuff will... Yeah. Yeah, like, so now, you don't... I, like, the reason I feel like they're just making up rules at this point is it's like, you don't even have to kill somebody. Just get them to, in Territory Wars, 20% health, and, and they're, they're dead. Like, and I mean, I guess, like, the only... You know, again, this won't work on, like, your Galactic Legends and other things, so, like, that's fine. But think about, like, taking this guy up against a Lord Vader team. And getting Royal Guard to like twenty percent health, where he's you know he's up dead. Like otherwise for team, that's still a lot of work to do. But for this one, he's dead. It's I, it's going to be interesting, not. especially with like Blight and seeing how the team leads, right? So it's, like you said before with Bad Batch, like we got all of these marquees and we didn't really know how they fit together until we got Hunter. And yep. we have all these interesting mechanics, but it's like, all right, what's the lead going to be that pulls it all together um, and makes it insane? Yep. And and this team, as of right now, is not intended to have um, a journey character as attached to it. As, as of right now, maybe Balin Skull gets pulled here, but I don't think so. Um, and they're saying it's going to be on the same power level as a Jar Jar team, which has a considerable journey character attached. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so, uh, if we go down to the basic now, I want to give a shout to just, like, I think the animation is really nice. Like, it's, it has that vibe of, like, a zombie attacking you. Like, this very mechanical motion. And it's uh, quick. So here, yeah. So here, deal physical damage to target enemy with a 40% chance to inflict the stack of blight can't be copied, all that garbage. Um, until the end of the encounter, if the target enemy already had Blight, this attack deals double damage. If this attack scores a critical hit, 
All Imperial Remnant allies gain offense up for one turn. Otherwise, Death Trooper Peridia gains critical chance up. While it, well, this is interesting. While in territory wars, and if Death Trooper Peridia has their Omicron activated, gave five stacks of siphon when this ability is used. So that's new. So, yeah, that there's not an Omicron attached to this, but they're saying if you have the Omicron, they're giving additional abilities. An extra that thing. Is and that's I new. guarantee that's this is not the only time we see this. Correct, yeah. I feel like it's going to be in every single ability. No, but not even just this oh, character. Right. I feel like in kits going oh, yeah. forward. Yeah, this, yeah, that'll be the norm that we're going to attach o o Omicrons to everything. Um, next is the uh, just a little nibble ability. That's the cheat code. Um, animation is interesting, to say the least. Right? I'm not sure. I, I don't love this one as much as I do the other one. I think um, what would make this really cool, because it looks like he's, like, biting the probe droid, and it looks like there's, like, blood coming out of it. I, I think it'd be really cool if they programmed it to be different based on, like, is this an organic target? Is this a mechanical target? Is this, like, I don't know, do Geonosians have blue blood? I, I have no idea. But, like, just that little extra touch would have been really awesome. And, I mean, it just looks like it's Zidane in the 2006 World Cup that's headbutting Marco Marco. <laughs> I don't even watch soccer, and I get that reference. <laughs> like, it's just, I mean, he's lining up for it and everything. Like that, that. <laughs> Maybe that was their inspiration. Yeah, dude, I, I swear I need somebody to make a Zidane meme out of it. <laughs> Moonborn, um, where are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict blight, which can't be copied, all that garbage. If the target enemy already had it, inflict two stacks of damage over time and remove 5% turn meter from the target enemy three times. Interesting. So, yeah. And, I mean, before I go further, so I also feel like this guy's going to want potency because that sounds like it can be resisted. Like, yes. it doesn't say that can't be resisted. So... You need some potency on this guy, or else, like, it's this stuff's gonna get resisted. But now, is there um, something in Night Troopers kit where, um, if the enemy loses turn meter, um, like you do something? Um, let me see. Because I feel like the 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 purpose here of removing turn meter three times is not necessarily just because they want us to um to have like oh you don't just lose 15 percent or it gets resisted uh but like something something there would do something because of uh, this kit or or another kit or like per, um enox kit Turn meter. Uh, healing beauty. Remove 10%. Character. They lose turn meter. Oh, on the basic. Uh, blight. Uh, this character takes bonus damage, bonus true damage whenever they lose turn meter from an enemy. So if they someone has blight. blight and gets hit by Peridia, they're going to take true damage three times. True damage three times. Okay. So, so that's important. So you st uh, the potency question is still up for debate because it does it does sound like it could be resisted, but true damage three times is nice. So if we so that's why it's not. Go ahead, finish your thought. So yeah, what I was going to say the reason this doesn't say fifteen percent turn meter is because they're trying to say hey we want extra instances of damage on this. Yes. So if we take CG at face value and we assume and mod this the way they're suggesting, then you would say possibly you're doing a crit damage set and a potency set. Yeah. Now it and might not end up that probably, way. Yeah. And probably with a potency cross with yeah. an offense percent secondary. Um, and this is the ability that if this ability, uh, if the enemy takes below 10% health, instantly defeat them. 
So that true damage is where this is really coming from. You're going to deal there the physical damage. There's all the stuff with blight, but then the true damage coming in is where this ability is really going to destroy someone. Think of your, your Arc Trooper's turret dealing yeah. like 20k damage to somebody. You know, this happening is, is you know, brutal. Terrible. Um, and then again, gain bonus turn and, and the cooldown of the ability is reset. And um, the cooldown of it is only... The thing is, the cooldown's only three, so it's a very... Like, you're going to be able to use that ability... Decent amount of times. You're going to be able to spam that, yeah. Now, in Territory Wars, at the start of battle, uh, Darth Trooper pretty gains Siphon, critical damage from target enemy, which can't be resisted. If this ability takes them below 20%, instantly defeat them. If the target enemy already had Blight, it also inflicts armor shred until the end of battle. Uh, while this Omicron is active, firing by rot? Rote, rote? I'm assuming. Like rote, like rote memorization. Uh, rote and necrotic tissue gain. It. Oh, okay. So that's the, the basic and the other yeah. special here. Okay. Gain additional effects. Siphon critical damage. So the I try to explain the siphon because I think sometimes people think it's always like Kylo's. So gain a percentage of critical damage equal to this unit's siphon, and the target loses that much critical damage. Stacking excludes raid bosses and galactic weapons. Yeah. So you cannot siphon away Supreme Leader Kylo Ren's critical critical damage. damage. But anybody else, you're taking their critical damage. Can I point out, though, when reading this kit, there's an, there's an interesting error here. And I know it's an error, but like if you look where it says, while in Territory Wars, and if all our allies are Imperial, Remnant, or Night Sisters, right? That's all in bold. So it yep. looks like, with the next thing not being in bold, it looks like this happens at the start of battle. Like the ability. But this was intended yep. to be bold also. So they were saying these oh, guys should have been... Because I read it and I was like, "What? how does this work at the beginning of battle while you were reading it? And then I went, wait a second. No, no, no. This is... They intended this to be part of that title. Um, yep. Yeah, but I guess... That. There's that colon there. Yeah. Yep. It threw no, me off cool. because of the way that they format. They need to hire me to format things. That's what I'm known for is my formatting. <laughs> so... So, I, again, I think that's fine. And it is interesting that it says Imperial Remnant or Night Sister. Again, there. Yeah. It'll be curious to see how good this could be combined with Dark Trooper Boss Gideon. I'm wondering if they're going to. It's, it's, yeah, it's intended to, like, have some characters that maybe aren't perfect in the squad, but, like, you could pull in for certain situations. Like, Almost I'm wondering. Like I'm wondering if this, these two characters, Night Trooper and Death Trooper Peridia, you kind of have like your Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, Scout Trooper, and then like OG Moff Gideon is kind of what I would consider the core of that team. Yeah. And then you kind of throw Death, Death Trooper and Storm Trooper in there because they're, they have that tag. But you move Death Trooper and uh, Storm Trooper to your Iden team because that's a team that's kind of Imperial Troopers are kind of missing characters to create full teams because of Dark Trooper Moff Gideon now. Yeah. You have this Dark Trooper Moff Gideon team that, hey, it's got a GAC Omicron now, and oh, it's got multiple Territory War Omicrons. Like, this thing could get real good real quick. Yes. I, I, I think it's going to be so interesting, I, I, especially when we have the whole picture. Yeah. And because then you could use Three Mothers, Morgan, Acolyte Spirit Initiate. So I'm going to say this here now because no one else is saying this and it's kind of been pissing me off. Um, the Great Mothers, everyone's like, oh, what do we call them? Oh, their names are these stupid things. I'm calling the Great Mothers the Sanderson Sisters uh, as a callback to Hocus Pocus and I will never call it anything else. And if anyone else starts calling them the Sanderson Sisters, that you heard it here first. The Sandersons. <laughs> I was going to call them the Fates because of uh, 
The I fates like works it's, too, it's, yeah. Like Hercules and, yeah, and Greek like, mythology. That absolutely I think that's what they're intended to be built oh, after. Absolutely. It's like the one thing Disney got right is that you're supposed to, you know, copy Greek mythology. Just not yeah. sure where that went wrong with that life. But... <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> what do we got going on down here necrotic tissue so deal physical damage to <laughs> all enemies and inflict offense down and tenacity down for two turns if the ally in the leader slot is an imperial remnant support to spell all buffs from all enemies if the target enemy already had blight inflict a stack of blight which can't be copied or dispelled on a random enemy that doesn't already have it. All allies gain offense up, speed up, while in territory wars, and if Peridia had his Omicron activated, this ability deals damage equal to 40% of his critical damage, and Death Trooper Peridia gains 10 stacks of Siphon for each debuff inflicted. So that's where you want the critical damage for. Is only for territory. Okay. <laughs> so they, they want us mod switching. Yeah, which great. But also, I think this kind of confirms that Captain Enoch is going to be the leader of this team. Yes. Because I don't think the Sandersons are getting an Imperial Remnant tag. No, they probably are not. And DTMG is a tank. Um, I guess you could yep. throw him under Moff Gideon and he's a support, but like that has such a weird uh, leadership that you'll never be able to activate it. Because this guy is an attacker and so is Night Trooper as well. So like they would break the Moff Gideon lead, wouldn't they? You would need, so the Moff Gideon lead needs exactly one tank, two attackers, and one additional support. Wow. Okay. So you do so have you two attackers. Yep. So maybe they're trying to make that relevant, but I, I think Captain Enoch, they already said is going to be a leader, right? So I, I think that they were going to ignore Moff Gideon for the most part. That's what my gut assumption is saying. So then we finally get a unique one, which is in your head. Death Trooper, Death Trooper Peridia gains 25 speed. Imperial Remnant allies have 35% critical chance and offense. Yeah. We get 35% offense. Night Sister allies have 35% max health and protection. Ooh. That's nice. If the ally in the leader. Oh, all right. Here it is. Here it is. If the ally in the leader slot is not an Imperial Remnant. Whenever an Imperial Remnant ally is dazed, stunned, shocked, or inflicted with speed down, all Imperial Remnant allies gain 15 speed stacking, max 60, for the rest of battle. Whenever an Imperial Remnant ally is critically hit, remove 3% turn meter from all enemies. Death Trooper Peridia gains 5% turn meter stacking for each stack of light inflicted on an enemy. So they're basically saying we don't so, want you to use it with DMTMG. Correct. So all of our Star Trooper Moff Gideon stuff can just forget we fucking said it. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I read this kit beforehand. Could have saved, saved yeah. some time. Yeah. Wow. But I, I, mean, I feel like it's good. I feel like the way... I, I like the way... I'm just going to say this. Like, I don't care. Like I like the way we read the kit where we're like, okay, this could work. Like reading each ability and then trying to see how they all come together... I feel like that was a lot better than when I just read a kit and then I'm like, oh yeah, it didn't make sense. Like I like that we kind of discussed each ability and how we thought it would work. It's, a, oh, it's then almost like somebody one. could learn something about the game. Yeah, almost. Mm. Nice, almost so, learned something. Not really. And so I'm reading this again, and that that removing turn meter from all enemies again, or instances of true damage. So it the way blight is going to work is almost like damage over time. Yeah. With that true damage. So I'll be curious. The only question I'd have is the true damage, like how much true damage? Is it the classic, like as much as your offense is? Is it, you know, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how they 
I think it'll be I relatively mean, small, especially with how many instances of it that get popped just off of regular abilities. But like I'm thinking here as an Imperial Remnant squad, where I right now use Radis against DTMG, that's not going to work here. Between all of the yeah. AOEs and and all of the turn meter and 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 their death by a thousand cuts already as it is, um, they're going to end up just killing themselves. Uh, so that that team is out the window unless they give that team something else. You have to use like Sharut or something in there to keep everybody. I, it's like something you can clear with uh, healing back, like plague. Like how do you get rid of blight? Um, I think that that is in Night Troopers kit here. If we pop this up, um, let's find blight. Minus one hundred percent health steal. Uh, allow blight to trigger. Uh, no, it does not. It would reduce to. At the start of the attack, which can't be resisted. Remove all stacks of blight when this character recovers to full health. So it's like plague. Oh, I see it there at the bottom. Okay, so it's basically plague, but in. Different. But slightly different. It's it's plague plus. <laughs> plague two point It's it's blight. Okay. Uh, plague is 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 Timu blight is basically what it is. Yeah. Okay. So that. Oh, so I think overall this kit is solid. And again, I want to give them credit that they're kind of call, like I know we were kind of talking about how we could use them with Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. But I am glad that they're kind of calling that out a little bit, so that way we don't just... As someone who's... Like, I could just steal these guys right into my Imperial Remnant. Yeah. I'm kind of glad that they're they're not allowing that. And that is something they... Again, some people will say that's not good. I think that's very good for the game, that they're trying to get a lot more specific with their teams. From the standpoint that it's... I don't want to say it's unfair, but, like, think about when the Toxic Leia comp, where they said, oh, Han and Chewie weren't supposed to work with Leia, and then it was just impossible to beat that. Yeah. Like, they were like, oops. They've learned from their... Yeah. Like, why does Jedi Knight Luke all out Old Republic is not working with him? Um, because Revan... Like, people don't realize when they play the game new now, they don't understand where the game was when that kit came out. Right, like that's an important part that people understand, need to understand is that half of these kits that they play with now didn't exist, and if yeah. Jedi Knight Luke played well with with Revan, um, that team would have been a lot stronger than it already was, and and at the time it was a very strong team even without JML. Yeah, it still beat Ray. I mean, like it was it was beating Ray. Yeah, even with and, and that's all that was out at that time. You know, everyone's like, oh, I'll use Leia for Ray or I'll use Starkiller. Like, none of that existed. Yeah. Um, but I think as a game gets older and as we're going into like year eight or year nine at this point, and I'll, I do think a lot of people don't understand, we went from like these really short picture book um, kits to like these Ayn Rand novels that are like you need your entire night to read through a kit. Uh, and it had to work that way because otherwise you just have the same kit over and over again. And the game has to, you have that power creep that always is going to have to push the needle just a little bit more. Yeah. I, you can, like, I still remember when Omicrons and Zetas first came into the game. And like, yeah. you look at what Zetas are now and Zetas are like the first ability on some people. Like, yeah, it's it just, it, it's, it's mind boggling. So, so I think that's. So, oh, go ahead. Oh no 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 no! Finish up your thought because I want. I was going to say that's about what I have on Death Trooper Peridia. Like yeah. I think that you know, we're. It's going to be a very good character. The one thing I'll say for everybody before you go crazy with any kind of, and I don't know if this is skipping ahead, but with these new marquees, if you're curious on if you should be buying packs or not, just ask yourself the simple question that. Day one, are you going to be farming this character? Like, the minute that he hits his node, are you farming him? If that answer is no, don't buy the pack. Yeah. 
the packs are buying you time. And I, I have to preach that because it, it infuriates me to no end. Like, I don't care that people say it's good rewards. The people who say that are in the position that, like, I'm literally waiting on Morgan and Night Trooper to go farmable. Like, I'm just, like, chomping at the bit for them to hit a note. I'm sure you're in the same position. Like, yes. It made, sense for, it made sense for me to buy those things because it's going to save me a bunch of weeks of farming. But if you're not going to farm them right away, it doesn't matter anyway. So now I, I agree with you. And, and that is going to get into a greater point that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But like for me, for example, this being the second marquee out of presumably three or four, I will probably buy these packs. They're the, I'll buy two of them or three of them, whatever I need. It depends on if they give us a free shard like they did with, um, with Morgan. Um, I will probably buy it because it's the second one. Uh, I didn't buy Drunk Trooper's shards because as the first, first Marquis, I knew that he was not going to be um, my limiting factor, right? So I wasn't going to spend 3,000 crystals on something that I knew wouldn't limit me. This might be something that might limit me. So I probably will end up buying those packs to get to that daily reward um, so that I can get that sped up because that's, I think, 40 extra shards over the course of the entire event, um, which becomes a huge deal when you're racing to try to get a GL as soon as possible. Um, which, again, you, we'll talk about a little bit later the whole mindset behind that as someone who is 11.9 million or versus someone who is like 7 million that's looking to go for Ahsoka. But that kind of leads us in here. Um, We've had these marquees kind of intertwined, right? We did a GL Ahsoka one. We did a Balin Skull one. We're now at a GL, a GL Ahsoka one. It seems like we're going to have this back and forth giving us a longer time frame in between, uh, which means we're probably going to get um, Ahsoka around November as opposed to like September where you'd normally assume it to be. Uh, and at that point, you know, that's what we're, we're in almost August now. So three and a half months from now, what is the culmination? Like what's, what's the end game of these events? So I'm going to say that I do not think Ahsoka herself will be part of the raid. Okay. And, uh, like, of the next raid. And the reason I say that is because my... I try to view... I try to put my, my hat on of, like, if I'm CG and I'm trying to make money, I know people are going to be willing to spend on Ahsoka because she's a Galactic Legend. Yeah. They, they know Galactic Legends perform well. Now, the one caveat I would say here is that Jabba and Leia did significantly better than Lord Vader. Yes. But there's a like, lot of factors it, there, right? Oh, absolutely. But I like I'm going to pull up the numbers now because I love I think I think it's on swago.gg. So, so while you're while you're pulling up those numbers, you know, I'll I'll kind of talk about the idea here. Darth Darth uh, Lord Vader had i think not the first r8 requirement but like the first journey r8 requirement and was the first gl to require four marquees four yeah every gl before that had two one or two so it was a very 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 expensive gl and i feel like they learned a lesson and they brought jabba back to three um and leia Leia, they went back to four, but they were still relatively kind about the rest. And they were, Leia also had all those bonus drops. They had two, two sets of bonus drops. Like, I thought I wasn't going to get Leia for like three more months. And I ended up getting it way faster than I was anticipating. Yeah, so I'm looking, they don't have like the full numbers, but just think of it like this. Like, so there's. Call it, there's over 100,000 Jedi Master Kenobis. Yes. And for Lord Vader, you're looking at... Yeah. You're looking at probably 60,000, give or take, a little bit over, closer to 70 maybe. And I'm looking at Leia's numbers, and 
you know, she's way more recent than Lord Vader is. And she's putting up competitive numbers to him. Yeah. So I think there's multiple things they learn there. Obviously, if a character's needed for a raid, you're going to get more of them. And this kind of was leading into just something I was thinking. I think what they're going to decide for this next raid is going to be completely dependent on the return of Jar Jar. Do you think so? I think right now, I think, so right now there's what, 2,000 Jar Jars in the game? Just about, game? yeah. So if this next round of Jar Jar hits, I, like, I, my entire guild is ready. And we're a, we're a top 200 guild. I think we're, we're much higher in the raid leader boards, but we're like a top 200 guild GP. So if you figure every guild in the top, even 200, let's say there's 50, everybody gets Jar Jar just for the sake of argument. That's 10,000. Yeah. Like, if you jump up that quickly for Jar Jar, plus all the people below that who are going to be getting him, I just feel like they don't, they're going to shy away from Galactic Legends being the raid character if they know they can make a ton of money off of a character off of a journey in character. the Jar Jar. Yeah, from a journey character. What do you think the unlock is? Because for some reason, the number in my head is that after the event comes around um, and the whole event is done, I'm thinking, I want to say. 17,000 Jar Jar. Ooh, that's a good question. I'm going to go with... I might actually go with 20. 20? Okay. I might go higher. I think... You know what? No. I'm going to go 21,553. That's huh. like super that's specific. Super, super, super I, I feel, specific. I feel like with... The raid in the state that it is, Jar the Gungans are kind of that team that everybody's beginning to gravitate towards. There was how many bonus events, um, and I feel like that it, just—it feels like a solid number to pick. I don't know. I, we could be way off. It's we we like could be, off. and it's going to be interesting. I, 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 when when these bonus event comes, I remember when GI did it, and I checked every day to see what the update was of how many people there were. And, and I don't remember what it was, but like my thought of going lower is, as I do all of these roster reviews every day, I've actually been telling people don't bother with the Gungans. And, and I'm the Gungan super fan. Um, because when we talk about like guild raid averages and we talk about like what the expectation is from your guild, a lot of times these people who wanna go for them, they're in a position where they don't need to go for them. Um, so I, I'm thinking that a lot more people are in the the um, the quad may camp with with Pow and Master Qui Gon uh, than than with Jar Jar. So I'm thinking a little lower. Maybe I mean that's a that's a solid shout, especially with both of them being Cantina characters. Yes, and they're super quick, and it hurt my signal data like just like nothing. But I was doing five refreshes a day just to get it over with. Oh, I wasn't going quite that hard, but it <laughs> took a little bit of time. So if you don't think that Ahsoka is going to end with a raid, and I personally I, I personally think it is going to end with a raid just because if we look at a timeline of like November and we look at like Jabba and when Jabba came out, I think it was about a month and a half later. Maybe it was a little longer for him because it was a whole new raid structure. I think it was maybe two or three months. Um, the raid came out with Leia. I think it was about a month and a half to two months with Jar Jar. It was about a month. So if we look about like a month to two months out, February, that's seven months on this raid. Is there enough time for them to release the content they need for a new raid outside of all of the Ahsoka stuff, especially with them? Basically, they always seem to go radio silent mid December to mid January. So my only thought was, would that be, would Balin be the raid character? So you think of, maybe Ahsoka will have nothing to do with it and Balin will? I don't know. I it, It's hard because I feel like, like you said, it's very awkward timing, but I could even see them maybe getting another release in by year end. Because they've given us, they've be told tough. us about Ahsoka. They've told us about Balin coming. 
And you think, at this point, what, last year, we had Leviathan already. Yes. Right? And that's why I think um, a new fleet is going to come as the next content. That's that's my thought, anyway. Oh, see, I think they're going to keep Leviathan for as long as they can. Oh, I hope not. I hate those battles. I can auto them now, and I still hate those battles. I think the reason they're keeping Leviathan this long is because they're trying to get the fleet shards like mine, who we've had a couple of guys get their Leviathans later, and they Relic 8, Relic 9 their Sith Assassins immediately because they're so sick of having to climb. And so it's a moneymaker for them. Which guys don't do it? Put Mark Six in your opening lineup and hit auto. Well, Mark's that works. I just, I just use profundity. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I want to do things on as much auto as possible. Um, I don't have time for I, that crap. I should, I should do the Mark Six thing. I just always use the profundity just because that's what I do in GAC. Well, like tonight, for example, I was at 14. I'm not usually... If Mondays seem to be the most active in my shard. I was at 14, so I had to do three battles. Um, and I was working until 6.30, and then I had 10 minutes before I had to work again until 8. And then I had to drive home, but my fleet ends at 9. And then we were doing this. So during that 10-minute time, I was like, let me just throw a battle on auto. And then as I finish work, let me throw one on auto. And then before I drive home, let me put on Spotify and then throw a battle on auto and it can just play out while I'm driving. You know, so I was able to yeah. get my entire fleet shard, my entire fleet climb done without really even having to interact with the game. Really? That's the egg yeah, way. I think it's a money. But it's a moneymaker for them and that's why I think they're, they're waiting. But I think we're good for another character release before the next raid. I actually Just think... Based on... Go ahead. Finish your thought. Because we got Hal, Leviathan, Leia, and Bo all within, what, six months in 2023? So we still have time, really, this year for another ship and another Journey Guide level character. I could see at least, at least the ship. I can see at least the ship. And I actually don't think it's going to be a capital ship. I think it's going to be like a MILF event. Um, and my theory is that it's going to be something to uh, lift Executor. And that's, executor? I think it's going to be something to lift Executor. And I think that they, it has to do with them wanting to elevate the three like GL level ships. And Executor is still good. Executor can beat Leviathan. It's a little bit harder. It's a great ship. But I, I think they want to elevate it to slightly higher than Leviathan, um, which is going to buy them time on a whole new capital ship. And if they make you farm four friggin' ships or whatever it is to get, like, Dengar's ship or something, something stupid um, to keep it relevant, to make us all spend money on galactic chases... Um, and to not have to fully design a another capital ship and another entire fleet. Because we don't have enough ships for another fleet. No. And that, well, that's the... I mean, that's been their problem since day one. Is... You look at Leviathan, we got, what? Three new ships? Yeah. Between Fury, High Interceptor, and uh, Dagger... And the Fury was a yeah. conquest, but we know yes. conquest for the next four months out, at the very least, right? Because the next one's Luthen, and then three Ezra's. Ezra, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, I just, I go more off of the fact that I think, like, they're, even if the journey got is similar to Jar Jar, like, four characters yeah. at a relic level, I'm, I know for some of you, you're like, oh, that's so hard. That's a joke at this point. Like, four Relic 5s is an joke. Compared to, like, four Relic 5s is the Bad Bats for Lord Vader. And you're still not yeah. even done with any of the stuff. Like, that is something, and that's actually a perfect segue into what I wanted to talk about, but also what we were talking about before, because we're talking about, like, um, 
if we were to go back to Ahsoka and we were talking about people who want to go for them. So like we have people in our Discord who are like, hey, I'm a diehard Ahsoka fan. I really want her. I'm going to spend money on her. I'm gonna, I know guys who are going to spend a ton of money on her who are in like the six million range, right? And which to me, I, I plead with these people. I'm like, please, please don't do it. It's, it's not for you. You're wasting your money. And I guess that the topic is like, I know you net don't necessarily think that there's going to be um, a raid. I do feel like there's going to be a raid. Let's just assume at the very least that there's going to be some kind of culmination, something to round it out. How does like a mid-game player leverage, I want Ahsoka, I know it's going to be important. Is it important to me? Do I completely ignore it? Do I do it in the background? Not for us. We have to. I have nothing that's farmable. I have zero things to shard farm for. Ooh, okay, so, yeah, if you're, I don't know, nothing. like, so I have things to shard farm for, but they're all in the cantina, so, like, you don't I do them. Yeah. It, I don't have it. Yeah, like, I literally, sorry, Dr. Aphra, but you, a month ago, did L337. Because I was like, I just have to bite the bullet and finish it. I have her. I'm I'm waiting to bite the bullet on Sana, Hondo, and Tuscan. Oh, Warrior. for Afra. Afra is a big luxury. Sucks. And it sucks because like Hondo would really help me in some ways, and like Tuscan, getting a Tuscan team, like they would all help me. And then like, how do I want Obi Wan, Master Fagon go there? I just can't, can't find the time. Um, but I think if you're in that range of I think, like, the best way to say it is, realistically, if you're a player, one of the questions you have to ask yourself in any kind of return on your investment farming is that if everybody loves to hate on Lord Vader because he's so expensive, all that garbage, yada, yada, yada. But, like, Ahsoka's going to have tougher requirements than Lord Vader. Yes. More than likely. And you're, you're talking more Kyra Tech, too, already. Like, if she requires multiple marquees, the characters that she has, it's going to be more Kyrotech than Lord Vader. Lord Vader, you'll be able to farm so much fat because his stuff is accelerated. So, in the time that it takes you to get Lord Vader, you could, or in the time it takes you to get Ahsoka, you could realistically get Lord Vader and start making progress on your Ahsoka. And by having Lord Vader, you could be boosting your resources inside of other games. And that's always been my logic with Galactic Legends, is can I get one sooner to boost my resources now and get the next one faster? So I love my Lord Vader. I'm not a Lord fa Failure person. I am a big fan. I am constantly defending Lord Vader. I, I do recognize he's very expensive, so it's very rare that I tell people to go for Lord Vader, even though I... And he's boring to play, but... I, so is JMK. Like, he also has very boring animations. Um, so it, it's very rare that I, I, I um, recommend them. And I don't know if I'd recommend that to someone in the mid-game, but I think at the essence, at the very least, what you're saying is farm something else, but do that in the background. Yeah. Like, I just use Lord Vader as that example. Yeah, Everybody, okay. he loves to hate him, So Yeah. But... You're better off going for Kenobi or, you know, if you didn't buy the light speed bundles or whatever. Or, like, I've been telling people to go for Sith Eternal finally. Because yeah. everyone, you can kind of, I mean, I joke that you get Sith Eternal last because you can back into his requirements at that point. Um, But, like, getting somebody, getting a Galactic Legend that maybe you're closer to than Ahsoka, but you can farm significantly faster is going to give you way more benefit than trying to get these Ahsoka characters. Because my reason for not recommending Sith Eternal to a lot of early game players really comes from the fact that the people like Royal Guard, you're not going to use Royal Guard for Eons. Yeah. Right? You're not going to get any use out of that Royal Guard. Your Darth Vader, you know, in the early game you'll get use out of Darth Vader. You'll find use for some of these guys. But Ball, and I, I mean... Outside of the raid, because I, I hate when you can't justify it with the raid now if you're not going to justify it with the raid before this. Like, but like, fall and 
Tarkin, you're not using them. How are you supposed to use them? Sith Marauder, you're not using him in the early game. Like, until you build other teams, you're not really getting to use those characters. Which is why I don't like recommending Sith Eternal. Because there's some very good parts there. Yet, Veers, Stark, or, you know, can create a solid Imperial Trooper team. Thrawn is really good, but there's so many characters that you can't use. And I'm getting the feeling with Ahsoka, looking at these requirements, you know, getting Asajj, Night Trooper, Death Trooper, General Skywalker, and Snips. Like, two of them are going to get used together, but you've got to combine them with characters you need to build for bait. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you've got this Relic Nine Snips, who, like, if you don't have the Jedi Master Kenobi team, that's a waste. General Skywalker, fine, but do you have the 501st? You know, like, the, Asajj, do you have the rest of the Night Sisters, or else you have this Relic that you have no use for? And so so it, I it's think all over the, the place, yeah. Yes, yeah, like, so far, there's no... That's why I love JML and Jabba... Uh, Leia, is that a lot of their wrecks kind of work together yeah, and give you themes so you're not just getting these randomish characters. You're getting, hey, I got a CLS team, I got a Rebel Fighter team, I got, you know, a Hut Cartel team, I've got this other Bounty Hunter team I can use. I don't know. I'm rambling a little bit, but yeah, I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah, so the, idea, the basic idea is really just, and, and I agree, like, slow farm them. If you really want Ahsoka, if you believe that it might be important to you, and again, you don't believe there's going to be a raid culminated in it, but and I do, I do at least believe there's going to be something at the end of the tunnel that it, it might be there, right? And and you yes, want I to... Yes, I agree. There's, there's something you, coming. Yeah. For her. So now, then, really, I, I guess the last thing when it comes to Ahsoka is Jabba gave us an economy event, and that was a great one, right? Like, Smuggler's Run, it's it's beautiful, it comes around like three times a month, it, it, it's awesome. Um, Leia gave us um, Ender Escalation 3, which is forgettable. Like, it, it's nice if you have it, you get something, but it's you'd never build towards it. Um, we even got one with Duel of the Fates, with um, Padawan Obi Wan and Master Qui Gon, do you think that they're going to do something here? So, Duel of the Fates, arguably the best of all of those. Like, Duel of the Fates is interesting oh, because it gives you mod materials and it gives you those relic materials. Yeah, like they kind of took Smuggler's Run and combined it into an assault battle. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so for Ahsoka. So you, if you follow like Java, they're like, okay, we're gonna give you mods. Yeah. Leia, they give you Omicrons, which I think like the big thing there is the Omicron, right? Like and that's the thing that you're guaranteed, that. isn't it? And then everything else yeah. is like, I don't know. You might get something useful. You probably won't. I don't think I've ever gotten something useful other than the Omicron. Yeah, it's all been dog shit. Um, but I think. I think the Ahsoka event, they'll probably learn from, hey, how many people are taking these guys to Relics? Because that's the next side of this, right? The Duel of the Fates have now opened up the, there's a Relic gate. Where before, in these assault battles, it was Relic gated to a sense that you can't go with Gear 12s on Challenge Gear 3. Unless you're Fat Phil and the Night Sister one, you have to get really lucky I, I, I quote you, I go into my messages and I scroll up through ours all the time in live streams. I'm like, look, see, he did it. Fat Phil did it. Look at this. Look at these, look at these G12 Night Sisters. But like realistically, they gate those challenge tiers with you're not going to get through it with tier 12. At least challenge tier 3. Because like every challenge tier 2 I, outside of the Night Sisters and probably Inquisitors... I was able to beat with tier 12. Yes. Like, with the very... core five, I beat challenge tier two. Some of them I beat with no relics at all. Places yeah, of power, like I think one. I had like G9s. Yeah, is that the Sith one? That's the Sith one. I was using like Nihilus yep. and like Darth Maul. Because you can ramp their max health and they just become in unkillable. Yeah. That's exactly how I did it. And back in the days, like, people don't realize that you couldn't sim them. So 
Yeah, you had to play it. <laughs> assault battle days were a double-edged sword because you're like, great, I get two Zetas. Fuck, I need to spend the next hour playing these assault battles. Like, that, that was a auto huge, huge, huge. That huge. was an auto button time for me. You had to, you had to auto. There were certain ones that you could, and there was there was other ones like um and uh, not Ender Esco, like Forest Moon. I didn't have great Imperial oh, okay. Troopers, so I had to do like the the Thrawn. Um, what's his name? Um, uh, Tarkin, the Tarkin cheese, where you ramped up his potency to be insane, oh, yeah. and that took forever to do, <laughs> and I'd have to do it every single month. It was awful. Oh, for, for, for Forest Moon, I could do Palpatine and Vader. Just do like the classic Empire team. Yeah. And, and that could work, at least through Challenge Tier 2. But, yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I do think that she'll get something. And from a resource perspective, there's not a lot that's left unturned at this point. Like, we have mods, Zetas, Omicrons, Kyratech, Relic nine mats. So I think the big, the one area they've never really given us a ton of benefit to is Sigma. You think single data? I think that like they gave us a little bit more, at least a chance at a little bit more in dual the face, where like some of that blue signal data amount that you can get is awesome. So you think it's going to be better like than the other assault? Because the other assault battles that challenge tier two and three give you a small amount, right? So you think it's going to be maybe a little bit more than that? Yeah, so challenge tier two and three give you, what, three blue signal data? Uh, is it three green and five white or five green I don't even look. Five white? I, know I know it's three blue for sure on each tier. Because I yell at people all the time when they're like, I gotta rush my relic fives to get to talent tier three, and I'm like, you're literally never gonna get a return doing this. Stop. Well, it depends. And and, and and you're right, but like certain things, so let's talk about Secrets and Shadows pre pre Marin, right? Pre Marin, getting past challenge tier one, you could get to challenge tier two if you were lucky with very specific modding. Um, challenge tier three, it wasn't impossible. I, I know of like one or two people that did it, but not only did the team suck, you had to invest very heavily in relics. Versus say like a Jedi team with Jedi Knight Luke and JML, you may, ne may never see an actual return on your signal data, but because the team was so useful everywhere else in the game, it was kind of like you were doing it for this other thing and now you're getting this free extra as like a rebate almost. That is exactly how I tell people to view assault battles. They're oh. not something you build specifically for. They're a bonus event that you get rewards from because you did something else. <laughs> you got so excited. For anyone watching this, if you could send me on Discord a clip of Fat Phil just like about to explode and and i would love that that would be great moonborn get on it please oh because it's the truth like how how many times do you hear somebody say i'm gonna do this for this assault battle and i cringe every time when i'm like stop like that's well, not worth it. we we had talked about this last time and for me when i talk about assault battles i talk about the core five and the reason that i talk about the core five and the core five is a term that i'm literally just making up right now but I still, I'll, I'll reference them, is that those are the five assault battles where the teams that you build are useful everywhere. And then outside of those core five, I tell people, don't worry about them. Like, you'll get those when you get them. Yeah. I'm assuming your the other ones would be the Inquisitor one and the Secret and Shadows. Yes, exactly. And now we have Duel of the Fates, but I don't really, it, it's an assault battle, but I kind of view it as its own kind of... Uh, event yeah that's the only one where i'd recommend you going after and relicing se like relic seven people for an assault battle it is the face outside of them like don't it, i i still i, I haven't made up my mind for a mid-game player yet and i know you just put out a video that um about it and and about duel of the fates and and we talked about the math on it i i haven't made my mind up on it yet i'm sure i am gonna have to in the near future because people are gonna ask me about it constantly 
Um, but you're saying signal data. I I'm thinking I would love like that G12 purple gear. Like if I could get med packs mm. from an assault battle, I would I would die for that because that is the only piece of gear right now that I'm constantly farming. See, I I just buy them. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm in a weird. I think because I'm so low on signal data, they are not I getting don't it fast enough. Care. Yeah, like I don't. I accumulate so much of that other gear because I just need signal data. Well, like, I think we I have, have a, a slight different mentality. And I think we're both very efficiency oriented, but being account um, GP wise, I'm a little bit higher. Not necessarily yep. good at the game higher. Um, I'm at a point where I'm like, everything is G12, right? Like literally everything. So I just want to relic shit for the sake of relic shit at this point. And I feel like I can't do that because I need those med packs for Ahsoka, for Balin Skull, for whatever comes next. And I, I would love to bring my entire um, my entire roster to relics, but I just that stuff accumulates so slowly that I'm nervous to do it. Yeah, see, that's I was gonna say I'm the reason I have so much of it is because I won't relic a character. Unless I can take them to some, you know, relic useful. Level. Yeah. Yeah. I like, my lowest relic is Asajj, and she's relic two. And the only reason I've never moved her from that is because that was when I took her to that for the gas event. Like, yeah. I, I was like, I'm going to take Asajj to relic two. And it got me through it. But now it's like, I should be relic five, so I'll lose that. But outside of that, it's all relic threes, is the, the oh. low stuff. My goodness. I, I, I mean, I have some relic ones now that I'm just relicking like randomly. Um, but for the most part, I feel like relic five is my, my low stopping point for, for the most part. I have a few nihilus is relic four. I need to take them up. Um, but I'm so hurt on signal data right now that I, I just don't have the focus to do that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk to you before we kind of split anything here is um, I'm still a little bit pissed off of at you and your community. So I'm going to call out your entire YouTube community here. And uh, I'm really annoyed at them. So we did this video um, about a month ago. So it was like around 4th of July, right? The misinformation, disinformation, and random thoughts. And you shared the thought that you hated Bluey, which is, it, I don't understand how anyone hates Bluey. And the entire next day, I was at my in-law's house watching the comments on the video, waiting for more people to call you out on your bluey hate. And I'm pissed off that only one person did. I don't remember their name. I remember talking to them for a few minutes and I'm just really annoyed that not enough people were like, what the fuck, cancel fat Phil, how do you hate bluey? It, it, it's just, man, come on now. It, the accents get to me after a while. Oh, those I Australian mean, like, accents. I love them. Do, 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 do. Like, I just, I can't, I can't deal. Trust me, I hear it all day. Like, I get it. I get my it. My daughter loves it. I, I work now, special ed. I work in, I worked in a self-contained classroom and I worked with a student who, cons every day, he wanted, he would request this Thomas the Tank Engine music video um called gone fishing and it would be like gone fishing da -da -da -da. gone fishing something all day da -da 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 gone fishing and i'd listen to that maybe 15 times a day and i hated it 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 pissed me off to no end but thomas the tank engine's kind of creepy bluey like he's an adorable dog it, it it's a she I've got oh, it see, I didn't know that. I, I'm I'm kind of gender blind. Oh, but oh, like you know I, that. I, see, I, there you go. Like you know more than you. Oh, dude, my my I get, my daughter <laughs> cancel her now. <laughs> she, she is <laughs> like I called her. She has a bunny, right? And I was like, oh, here you know, here's here he is. And she goes, no, daddy, it's a she. <laughs> I get yelled at every time. So, so I was like, oh, Bluey, like. So like you like watching Blue, like he's a, he's a boy. He's like, no, Blue is a girl, Daddy. 
obviously how do you not know um so yeah. i'm i'm supposed like it's it's july here and i told you that um in october my wife is kind of going to your neck of the woods and i was like hey we got to get a drink um and i'm excited for that but um I'm gonna like buy some bluey shit on Amazon for your daughter and I'm gonna show up at a bar and be like here's like a bluey ball pit and a, a loud like bluey toy that like makes noise and like just here you go I'm spending all my money on bluey crap uh, just to piss you off. This is so bad. So my, we go to Costco right because like we're you know family and that's what we have to do that's what you do and so i was looking at getting like they had like doc like a pack of dr squatch soap for i don't know like 25 bucks and then they had like the kirkland brand of bar soap for like five so i was like oh i'll get the kirkland brand of soap and then we're walking up the aisle and my daughter's like daddy look there's a bluey bath time set and it's like 20 dollars <laughs> so I'm like, well, I'm using the Kirkland bar soap. And, and my daughter gets bluey. bluey. So That's then she great. goes, she goes to our, she goes to our neighbor, and is showing him her bluey bath time set. He's like, "That's for you, right, Phil?" And like right next to the bluey in Costco was a Hello Kitty set. We're gonna I'm need like, mine's the Hello, mine's the Hello Kitty set. Like, we're gonna need that from. Uh, I know that on his special OnlyFans account, uh, FatPhil.OnlyFans, there will be a couple pictures there of uh, of him just some tasteful bubble suds, and just you with your your bath time bluey set. Gosh, OnlyFans. All right. I'm, I'm not gonna torch you anymore. I could talk about bluey for the next hour and just to filibuster this whole thing. Um, what I didn't mention at the beginning of this video is that it is actually going to, it is a two part video, right? So half of it's going to be here on my page. The second half is going to be on Fat Phil's page. Um, I am going to link that in the description as well. So you can kind of get that continuity. We're going to put that in the end screen too. So it's just very easy for you to find it. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about, uh, the next couple of months in the game. Um, including kind of the light speed bundles and, and the expectations that we have coming up uh, and a couple new things with Datacrons and the future of those based on what we're, we're seeing now. So with that said, I hope you got something out of this, like even just a small nugget, maybe like a little snigger and like a laugh and like a giggle or whatever it is. Um, peace out for now and I'll see you on the other side.